Watch out for videos from Ingve Malmsteen's Rising Force, Fate's Warning, and Aerosmith. We're going to be talking to this guy here. Me, yeah, me. But now, uh, for the first time anywhere, we've got a world premiere video. Ace Fraley, Fraley's Comet is back. This is insane. Jeff Young and Dave Mustaine from Megadeth are here. Hello. Hello. And, and looking very chipper, you know, you just came back from, from a tour, and I expect you to look kind of ragged. Yeah, well, well, inside we're ragged, outside we're looking chipper. Really just squeaky clean. Yeah, well. Now, it, you just came back from, from Europe and doing this tour. The record, uh, the record has sort of a negative title in a way. So far, so good. So, so what? what? How do you, how's the band doing? Are you happy with, with how big the band is now or how big the band isn't now? Or? Well, I, I think the way, the way that the album got titled was that, you know, we, we wanted to... Uh, People don't know that we weren't going to let success go to our heads. A lot of bands, they think that they've got one record out, you know, that they're cool. They get a second record out that they've made it. You know, the third record that they're, you know, a household name. And, uh, you know, we're not going to let that come between us and our following by letting, you know, megalomania or, or you know, having huge egos or something like that stop us from playing. You know, we still screw up on stage. I mean, we're human. We're supposed to make mistakes, you know. It reminded, the title of the album reminded me of that. Uh, was it Reform School Girls? <laughs> it was so young, so bad, so what? Yeah, well... That's where we stole it from. <laughs> you, is there a connection, do you think, between, uh, or maybe an evolutionary process between punk and speed metal? Is there is an it, evolution? Is, is it, is, are they connected There's in any way? There's a connection. What is it? A lot of bands, you know, in the rock market have uh, used it. He's a punk Iron Maiden, had a lot of punk influence when they first started, you know. There's definitely some in Megadus music. Uh, unfortunately, the fans tend to carry it over too. When we went to Ireland, the way they show that they like you is they spit at you. <laughs> Because uh, well. it's, it's a throwback to the punk <laughs> movement. And, uh, yeah, and I well. guess you must show them that you like them back. I guess. Yeah, we pee on them. Yeah, that's, that's a warm feeling. Pee on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No pun intended. <laughs> Uh, 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 Anarchy in the UK is a video we've had around here but, uh, for a little while and you, you got it on the record. Why did you decide to, to do that? Everybody that likes the sex pistols. That plus we knew Steve Jones and we figured that since we wrote that song 10 years ago that, you know, no, I'm we, just kidding. We, he better let us do it the right way this time. Now we, we, uh, we really, we'd known Steve for a little while through somebody named J.D. Hoffman at MCA Records who handles Steve. And uh, we just thought that it'd be a good song to do. We were gonna do Problems. You know, the problem is you. But um, we decided to go a, you know, a different route, something that's a little bit more political, since we're kind of a political type band. And- uh, Are you anarchists? Well, <laughs> we'll leave it up to you to, to figure yeah. out. Come but anyways, to the show. <laughs> it, this is an obvious indication, you know, where punk and metal cross over, because we've brought in punk into heavy metal right now with this song. There's another band which we won't name that's done a Sex Pistols song, but I'm sure everybody out there watching knows who it is. It's Hi, Scott. It's Julio Iglesias, yes. we all know that. Yeah, really. Anarchy in the UK, this is Megadeth's version. And the decline of Western civilization is there. It's scary, isn't it? It is. It was scary for us when we went up, we pulled up for the screening out there and we look at it, our, uh, his hair on the marquee, I should say. Big 10 for you to picture of my mug. Kind of scary, just send a picture to your mom or anything? No, I, I dragged my mom down there. You made her see the movie? No, I just dragged her. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, uh, when the critics talk about this movie, uh, one of the critics has called you guys white knights. Why? Because we're white. Mm. But there's a lot of we white people in this film, I've that. noticed. I don't know. I, I think that because of our viewpoints, that a lot of people think that, you know, we can change things. I mean, we're not here to change anything. We're here to do what we want. You know, I mean, if you get all wrapped up in being some kind of a savior, then you lose the meaning. You know, you're so wrapped up in being, you know, a, a metal evangelist, you know. I mean, then you start to think, hey, well, how can I make money to keep things going, you know, so I can pay for my big mansion so I can have all my Marshall stacks and, and have all my, you know, uh, the people that work for me and stuff like that, collecting, passing the plates around at concerts and stuff like that. We don't really care about what people think about us. It's if they like our music or not. It's this, it just comes back to the whole thing of you can talk about how big your instruments are, you can talk about... You know, how much Jack Daniels you can drink in a night, you know, how many drugs you do, how many groupies you've had, 
or you can do what Megadeth does and just let the music do the talking, and that's what we did in the movie. I mean, we didn't set out to create any kind of, uh, you know, illusion about ourselves. or we just did what we did, and everyone else obviously did what they did in the movie, and, you know, because the segments were all shot totally separate from each other, and the way the movie come acro came across is just, you know, the way each band perceives the music business, and that's the way we perceive it, and that's the way we're going to, you know, try to keep Megadeth heading that way, music first, what and everything else doesn't, isn't even involved. We're kind of like the odd man out in the movie because everyone else is in this little cliche, you know, circle of idiots, you know, and, and here we are, you know, totally saying the opposite that everyone else is saying. And, and I talked to, to one friend of mine who said he talked to somebody in one of the bands there that goes, yeah, well, we were on this big roll talking about how cool it is to be in a heavy metal band. And then Mustaine goes, yeah, well, just the opposite kind of stuff, you know, and uh, I mean, that, that's what it's about. People don't want to know what you do in your pastime. They want to know what you're about on stage. All right. This is the Headbangers Ball. That means music. That means uh, we have, uh, let's see, Fate's Warning, Silent Cries, and more with Dave and Jeff. It is the Headbangers Ball. Jeff Young and Dave Mustaine from Megadeth are here. Uh, we just got these dates. These tour are dates. Tour dates. Iron Maiden, see? Megadeth. See? Tour dates. See? Iron Maiden, this Megadeth. Is like it's just scribbled on a piece of paper as far yeah, as Yeah, you can concerned. see us at the Metro Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, or the Five Seasons Center in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And anything else, just keep looking. Keep reading. So these are all dates w with you and Iron Maiden together? Right, just us two. Brand new. Metal. And yeah. you're seeing it here first. first. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> what, what is hard for me to imagine is uh, a late night. Um, uh, we talked before about uh, being happy with your relationships at home, your girlfriends, whatever. And I, I, I just can't imagine you guys going home with your honey and, you know, you throw on... Uh, some sort of metal record to get close. Is there music that you guys listen to that would surprise the people who are watching tonight? Yeah. Way. <laughs> Definitely. Black yeah, Black. quite a bit. A lot of guitar player um, bands that really don't have any, uh, any vocals to it and stuff like that. Just music that you can get into. More instrumental kind of stuff. There's some neoclassical fusion. Or is Give me some names. Vinnie Moore, Tony McAlpine, stuff like that. And, you know, there's also... Obviously, we listen to everything on MTV. <laughs> so when you want to like, <laughs> cuddle up and get close. Yeah. But you listen to yeah. it with the volume down. Yeah, yeah we both volume. watch TV. The volume off, we just look at the girls. <laughs> we're like, with our girlfriends, <laughs> looking at the screen, Taylor Dane or somebody comes on, we're like, I love you, I love you. And little do they know who we're really talking yeah. to. Yeah, you got to be on the bottom, though, so you can look over their shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> What, give me some names, David, people you might listen to at home, besides MTV, of course. Oh, uh, well, uh, I mean, I, I really like Led Zeppelin a lot. Um, there's a couple other, I, I really don't want to say because I don't want to blow anybody's minds. But I think it's a good thing because... The, Dave the, likes Crowded House, admit it, Dave. Who? <laughs> <laughs> I no, there's a lot of bands that we listen to, like, um, you know, um, I, I can't even think of anything right now that I would want to say. I mean, like... R.E.M. No. 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 Nine, nine, no. nine. Uh, I listen to a lot of classical music, Vivaldi, Paganini, Mozart, mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's good to get close to. Uh, see, I think it's good to talk about that because people who are into metal, the, the audience oftentimes is real narrow in what it is that they want to listen to. And I think if they knew that the musicians were listening to other things well, beside that. Think we, where do they think we steal our ideas from? Yeah, we like Poison and Motley Crue. Yeah, and that's us. Uh, bon Jovi and... I sense a, a note of sarcasm. A lot, a lot of rat. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I'll tell you what. We, uh, I'm going to give you some information on this coming up shortly. This is the first edition of the Headbangers Ball t-shirt. I have more information uh, on that coming up. As it a was ours. Mark, we've hosted uh, Headbangers yeah. Ball twice. It's about time we get ours. <laughs> Good shot. Are. These we'll are cherish uh, them. Uh, we'll wrap our pal. girlfriends in them. No, we'll use this for love's not. <laughs> Limited edition, folks, and they information are. on how you can get yours is coming up uh, real soon. I got some Aerosmith video coming up. Dave, thanks a lot for hey, being here. You're quite welcome. Anytime. Jeff. Ladies, we're coming home. There you ah. go. Don't go anywhere. Here's Aerosmith. The band even goes so far as to say that they don't want to be rock stars surrounded by drugs and a bunch of groupies. They just want to be musicians. Swiss and the band are pretty secure with our love lives anyway, so we don't really, you know, we don't need music to bring in, you know, other people. I'm pretty satisfied. 
with my girlfriend. I don't know about him. I know, uh, I know Junior, the bass player, has got a nice girlfriend too. I mean, I don't think so, but he does. And, um, <laughs> um, bleep, bleep. <laughs> Anyways, no, we, we uh, you know, we're not into it for the, the big sex, drugs, and rock and roll kind of thing, you know, we're into playing music and let people hear stuff, you know, and think, you know, and um, a lot of bands are in just to get laid, and, you know, that's... that's and that's it. what they're going to get, just get laid. And they'll, they'll get the last three letters of it, too. Hey. <laughs>